What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today, I wanted to go over the Dynasty Deep Dive that dropped today from EA Sports College Football 25. Now, they put out a lot of information, a ton of it. There is a huge forum list with everything laid out. I'm not going to read everything word for word because we'd be sitting here for an hour and a half, two hours talking about it. But what I want to do today is sort of go through some of the stuff, summarize it up for you, give you guys my thoughts, and I guess just see where it goes from there because this game right now has so much hype and for good reason. It seems as if everything that we have been complaining about in the Madden world was done for the college game. I mean, the la the the depth that they have showed so far in the dynasty and like the the last week with the the sounds and sights of the game and everything is just screaming that this is going to be one of the most immersive games we've seen for football in a very very long time the first portion of this is talking about just building your dynasty and how you can get yourself to the top of college football and it all starts at the beginning of course Throughout this whole forum, they go over all of this different information about coaching and how important it is to your overall enjoyment and advancement within your own dynasty. Not only are you going to have to decide what kind of coach you want to be, but you're also going to have to decide how you're going to stack your staff up next to you to complement what you are doing. So when you first get started, you're going to have to decide what kind of coach you're going to want to be. And then you can, of course, upgrade your coach from there on out. But as they say multiple times throughout this entire document, no coach can be good at everything. And you are going to have to decide what type of coach you want to be. Laid out here in this section tells you what are the three main categories. Some are incredible at recruiting, while others are motivators who maximize the potential of their players. And lastly, tacticians. They out-scheme their opponents with on-field X's and O's. So you're going to have to choose between three different main archetypes or main categories. Do you want to be a recruiter? Do you want to bring in the best classes every year and work towards that? Do you want to maximize the players that you have, even if it means you don't get the best recruits? Or do you want to take what's given to you and just always be two steps ahead of any opponent that you face on Saturdays? This is gonna be something that's really, really fun to get into because they say in here that there is no one way or two ways of getting to the top or getting to a, 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 a tremendous accomplishment. You can be any one of these three. You can also even have a hybrid coach where maybe you are good at maybe one or two things. You know, maybe you're good at being a tactician and maximizing players, or maybe you're good at, you know, recruiting and being a tactician. You're never going to be able to be just a great all around coach at every single category. And you guys can see a lot of this stuff from going to this blog or watching this video. If you haven't already, everybody's talking about it. But essentially what you're going to be able to do is choose the category you want to go to, form your staff around what they are good at and what you're bad at to try and offset any type of weaknesses you have. And then you have to go through the whole process of building up to become better and better every year they have a whole system set up where you can buy certain goals and buy certain packages to improve your coach in certain areas and eventually become a, an incredible recruiter or incredible in one area and they they say in there you can either become very very good at one thing or you can be very good at two things but you'll never be very very good at three things so it's, it looks like it's going to be a similar progression system to what Madden has right now, where you can upgrade your talent there on, on your, your talent trees, but it's going to be much more important to what you decide to go with and, and how you build out your staff, because your staff, you do not control the staff. So you have to find the best prospects for your own staff and then hope that they are aligning with what you are good at or opposite of what you're good at to make a well-rounded machine out of your coaching staff. One of the other parts they list here is if you end up exceeding in one of the archetypes to such a degree that you are like a, a master of it, you can get the program builder or CEO label for that. And that is where you are like the cream of the crop when it comes to this stuff. But you can only be it for one thing, if I'm not mistaken. And like it says here, there's no singles formula. There's no single formula to reach these statuses. They have it built to where you can choose your own path and still make it to the top. You don't have to, 
to buy into what the I, I guess for lack of a better term because there's not really one in sports games the meta of building a coach because you can do it however you want if you want to do it through being good on the field and being a tactician you can do that if you want to do it just solely through recruiting and putting the best talent on the field every year you can do that in order to progress and level up your coach in these different categories they have four different areas where you can get these goals achieved from, whether that's one game weekly season or even over the course of a career and once you hit these goals you'll get notified in game if, it, if it's something that happens mid game you'll get notified when it happens and you will be given xp which then will be used to spend coach points so the xp turns into coach points the coach points turns into building up and leveling up your coach to get better abilities to enhance the overall archetype that you are choosing to go down and of course it's all going to be laid out here for you they have a lot of really good screenshots to just show you exactly you know how you are getting this and where you're getting it from to keep track of things and then here on this picture you can see here that somebody's getting notified mid game that hey you just hit one of your goals you got more points and it tells you how many points you get and of course like i said as you go through the motions and you start stacking them up you're going to be able to accelerate your xp get your coach leveled up and hopefully one day be that program builder or ceo that everybody wants to be when they're playing college football and then you can't just become an elite person in a certain category or archetype just because you've been doing it for a long time there are actual like tiers that you have to hit for what you're doing in order to qualify for them like right here it has an example in order to become an elite recruiter you must spend 50 coach points in the recruiter archetype and sign two top five recruiting classes once these goals are complete, the archetype becomes available for purchase. So essentially it's locked until you hit that criteria and then it unlocks and then you can purchase it with the coach points that you earn through the XP goals that you are hitting throughout the course of your dynasty. And you can even purchase different archetypes as well. As it says here, you do not have to just stick with the one archetype you chose. You can unlock and purchase more archetypes and then still build your coach out from there. You are not set in stone with what you're going to pick at the beginning of this whole scenario. So it's, it's, it's going to be really interesting to see how some people build this stuff out. The only caveat here is if you end up getting to program builder or CEO archetype level, then that is going to be your active archetype. You can change which archetype is active for you and that will affect like what type of in-game or in-season perks that you have for having these abilities as a coach. And a lot of them are very, you know, different. And here's just a, a couple of, of the examples that they put out here, like battery pack, offensive players fatigue less or fatigue slower and hurry up increased delay to defenders looking at the sideline at the snap and they're going to have them for all sorts of different things not just on the field stuff but also like how you can recruit and how you can um get the most out of your players and motivate them to to perform at their highest level the other really important part is is the coordinators you know you're going to have a certain set of abilities as a head coach and then you're also going to have two coordinators an offensive and a defensive coordinator and as you can sort of see here they have a little overlay where it almost looks like it's comparing all of your guys's different uh builds together to see who's got like the, the best circle right who's got the most areas hit and this is going to be very vital because if you are only good at recruiting as a coach you're probably not going to want to go and get a bunch of recruiters as your coordinators because then there's nobody that's going to help motivate the players there's nobody that could be the tactician for your team so you're definitely going to want to make sure that you're sort of balancing things and making sure that every area is getting hit because it will affect you at some point i mean these players like the way that they have this worked it almost seems like these players have feelings like they they are going to be able to decide if they want to leave and transfer and they're going to be able to decide if they even want to come to your school to begin with it, it's all up to you and it seems like it's going to be really it's just gonna, i'm just so excited for this guys i really am this has been this is this is the kind of football game i'm looking to play right i i want this immersive if you guys have watched my channel you know that immersiveness is what gets me like excited to play the game it keeps me interested if i am just going through the motions because the game is just bare bones and it just doesn't offer you much I just lose interest after a while, right? Everybody does, right? And that's what happens with Madden. Madden is popular for like, what, 
three months, right? It's, it, and then it goes in spurts. So it'll be good for three months and then it'll sort of die down. Then you got Christmas time coming around and everybody gets excited again because they're getting in at discounts or on sale for Christmas. So then it's good for another couple of months and then it dies down again. And then the draft happens and then people are excited for another month. And then everybody knows the next game's coming out so everybody doesn't care anymore. But if you have a game that is so immersive and gives you so many options to keep playing, then you won't have a reason to want to put the sticks down, to want to put the game down. And that is what I've been looking for for so long. And I'm really, really looking forward to getting into this, even though I'm not like, and I'll admit this, I'm not the biggest college football guy. I just never got into it as much as I did pro football. But this game is making me want to become a savant in college football as much as I feel like I am with the NFL is how much I follow it. So I, I'm definitely excited for this. Another big talking point in here too was the coaching carousel. So not only are you going to have to worry about balancing your team, balancing your coaches, like your, your staff and building your staff, but then you also have to worry about these guys either deciding they want they don't want to work for you or they don't want to coach at this school or they might even decide to go to the nfl there are so many different things that you have to worry about and on top of that now you have to worry about hey is my you know is my coordinator ready to fly the coop because he his offense has been top five the last three seasons and all the nfl people are starting to take notice so these things can happen and then you have to start from scratch again so you can build up and build up and build up and still have to rebuild some areas and it just keeps things really, really fresh. And then I know you see the recruiting stuff in the background here on the video playing. And this is one of the biggest parts as well about this upcoming title. The recruiting is going to be something that is very, very detail oriented and it's gonna take a lot of thought and a lot of time and effort to really become what you want to in this, in this dynasty. Not only are you going to have to meet with the players and get to know them enough to actually know what they're looking for, but you are also going to have to keep them motivated enough to play for you after the fact, because the transfer portal is in this game. As you guys have known, these players will be able to leave when they want to. If you don't want to, if you don't want to give in to what they are looking for, these are the four core goals that they put down for when you're building your program and how they made the players much more in depth when it comes to handling them humanize recruits by giving them unique needs and motivations that player has that the player as in you us has to discover by interacting with the recruit so there are things that you need to learn about the player in order to keep the player happy or to understand them that you will not know up front you have to put the time in with the player to learn these things about them in order to unlock this information you're also going in depth as far as regions Differentiate regions of the country by player caliber, quality, and type to authentically capture high school talent based on historical real world data. So if there is a certain part of the country that is best known for creating running backs or wide receivers, that area is primarily going to have the better, more ready to play prospects in that area. Now, does that mean every player you have to get them from that region to have a good one? No. But just like you see in the real college world, it does come down to, are you hitting the hot spots for the recruits for these positions? Because if you're not, you're potentially losing out on some crazy, crazy good prospects. I mean, this is the hardcore stuff that I'm talking about. Like some, some people might not like this one right here. I love it because this is real world stuff. Represent the different resources available to schools, ensuring the top schools can blanket the country while smaller schools will need to be more targeted with their approach. So essentially meaning that capitalism is alive and thriving in EA Sports College Football 25. And that's a good thing because that is realistic. If you are in college football, if you are a recruiter or if you are a player going into the system there, you know that smaller schools do not have the resources or the staff to be able to go everywhere. Whereas big schools, big programs, widely known programs are going to be able to pretty much have their their hand in everybody's cookie jar, right? Everybody is going to know everything at that program. And they get to sort of just pick and choose whatever they want because they're the big dogs in the yard. And you know, the smaller schools have always been the ones that have to really put a lot more effort into getting these big time recruits. And you know, most of the time they unfortunately, they do not get the big time recruits because they don't have those resources. But 
they're bringing it to this game so now not only you have to worry about the coaching you have to worry about your coordinators you have to make the players happy you also have to realize what your place in the atmosphere is in college football and work to better it if you're you know a smaller school or make sure that you're not missing your target you know goals by being a huge school and maybe not delivering on everything maybe you're not you know maybe if you take over a big time school like LSU or Alabama or or USC and you're not hitting your your championship goals or or whatever they're expecting you to hit because maybe you're lacking a little bit in recruiting or you're lacking a little bit in this area you you're going to have higher expectations at those schools because of that very fact and they even mentioned that in above posting here before that your goals like if you are a coach at a small school and you get like five big wins in a row they are not going to count that the same as if you are a big school and you get three or four big wins in a row because the level of competition is much lower on the on the smaller scale schools so they're even putting that into play here for us to to toy around with and and have to go through the motions with so we are getting like almost a full-on simulation with this dynasty as from what this says right we don't know what the game is going to look like once it drops nobody has played it yet I'm, I'm sure there has been plenty of player people who have played it that aren't talking about it yet but just the average joes we haven't played it yet we don't know if this is all legit because i mean let's be honest we haven't had a lot of luck with trusting what ea tells us over the years i'm just hoping that it's all right because if it is right this is going to be an, a, an amazing amazing game and then they also go over the stage recruiting that they have in here. So while you are going through all this recruiting process, you're going to have three stages. The first one is discovery, they call it. It's the initial stage. You're finding which prospects to target, what their skills are, and what they care about most. This stage is all about uncovering information about the recruit as quickly as possible. This is where you have to put the time in with these players, right? So you know what they're looking for. Then once you're past that point, you've discovered what you need to discover, it's time for them to announce their top five schools or from what they call the pitch. During the pitch phase, you are selling the recruit on your program and what you offer. How well your school aligns with their motivations will determine how successful you are. So if you are going into it and you're looking at a player that you really want, but has no alignment with your motivations or very little alignment with what your, your team can offer, you might be wasting your time going at them. You're taking a huge risk in trying to recruit them. So if you are dead set on recruiting them, you better close hard. You better pitch it hard because they are looking for what is gonna work best for them. It's not just CPU, please accept this. CPU says, okay, it's enough, I'll take it. It's not that simple. There is 14 different markers, they said, as to what they are going to look at or when deciding if your school is worth it or not. And you're gonna have a grading scale on all of these different things. And this here is the page, I'm just gonna show you guys this here. This is the motivations that I'm referring to. Look at all of these different things. They are going to be looking and seeing what you stack up with, with all of this stuff. And if this player is not looking for stuff that you're offering, like I said, you might be wasting your time, right? This player clearly tells you what they're motivated by, clearly what they want. And if you don't have those things, then you have a very good opportunity of missing out on a recruit from somebody else that might've been better aligned with your situation. So it's all about trial and error, risk and reward. What do you wanna do? What are you willing to try? And when do you throw the towel in and make sure that you're more sticking to the core values that you know is gonna work for your recruiting class? And then they go into more detail about all 14 of those different areas right here for you. Playing time, playing style, championship contender, program tradition, campus lifestyle, stadium atmosphere, pro potential, brand exposure, academic prestige. There is so many different things that these players are gonna be looking at when they're making a decision to even come to your school that, I mean, that's just crazy, man. Like this is awesome stuff to see. I am, I'm blown away by this. What do you guys think? Let me know what you guys think down below. Do you think this is gonna be the best football game that we've seen in the last decade, at least, if not two? Because I, I, I'm I'm almost ready to say that, and I haven't even played the game yet. Yeah, I know. I'm crazy. I'm just I'm all I'm all hyped up for it. I get it. But this is like this is the kind of stuff that we have been asking for in the football world, whether you're talking about NCAA or the NFL with Madden for at least 15 years, in my opinion. Okay, I shouldn't say 15, because Madden 12 wasn't bad. So we'll say 12 years. You also are gonna have to worry about your team needs. You can't just take every quarterback you want. 
a quarterback that you're recruiting might be like, hey man, I want to be able to play in the next season or two, or I want to play right now. And if you're going to recruit them, you might need to promise them that they'll play, or you might need to prove to them that your roster is capable of them playing. So if you have, you know, a top 10 quarterback in, in the conference or in the league, you know, and you're trying to recruit them, they may be like, why would I come here? You already have a guy. So that's another portion of this that you really need to think about. And then just like you have in Madden, or you should have in college, you are gonna have scouting throughout the season for upcoming high school players. So you'll be evaluating your team at the moment and also sort of anticipating what might happen after the season, whether that be some players going off because they're graduating, going off to the pros, transferring out. So that way you can start scouting these players to know a little bit more about them before you make the decision to go in and pitch them once the off season starts and the recruitment process begins. And then in, in doing this, they're going to have four different states of scouting, unscouted, partially scouted, mostly scouted and fully scouted. Now, those they go without, you know, having to say what that means. They're pretty self-explanatory. And like I said, I'm not going to read every line for this because like we would be here for two hours. There's so much stuff in this blog. I encourage you guys to check this blog out. I'm going to have it linked in the description below. So make sure you check it out if you want to hear a lot more about this stuff, if you haven't already seen it or know it's out there. And then it also goes into more detail about the recruitment. Once you get past that scouting phase, you can offer scholarships, search social media, DM the player, contact families and friends, or spend, or send the house, which is just different ways that you can try to recruit these players that come to your team. It's, it's really awesome what I'm seeing out of this, man. I am so excited for this upcoming game. And then, you know, I could probably go on another 20 minutes about all of this other stuff, man, but I know you guys have probably seen the videos. I know you guys have probably, you know, read this blog or seen somebody else talking about it. I just really wanted to make sure I got a video out there because I, I love giving my opinion on things. And again, man, I'm just really excited for this thing. And I really, I highly suggest that if you have not read through this document, that you go ahead and do it because there's even more stuff in here that I didn't even touch on because I just didn't think there was enough time to, to really talk about it. And without making an hour long video, you know, that goes into the, how the 12 man uh, playoff or the 12 team playoff is going to work, how you can uh, like uh, customize your, your conferences and all the different things that you're going to be able to do within this dynasty, not only to your own team, but the teams around you. It's, it's, a, it's incredible stuff, man. I just hope that this game delivers on all of the things that they say they're going to deliver on. And if it does, I really can see myself diving headfirst into this for the channel. I love Madden. I've always loved Madden. I will still play Madden. I'm just hoping that Madden tries to come up to this level because right now it seems like this game is already above Madden's level and it hasn't even come out yet because they're listening to the community. They said it in the beginning of that blog post I was just looking at. They listen to the community. They did not care about what the, the people on the board want or how they can stuff their pockets the most or none of that stuff. They went into the meetings with all these different organizations. They went into the meetings with the committees about selecting these college football teams for the playoffs. They went in and they talked to coaches and players and recruiters and everything, and they got all the best stuff. And then they also talked to their community at length for years about what they want to see. And it looks like they delivered on almost all of it. Now, is it going to be perfect? No, no video game seems to ever be perfect. So I'm not expecting perfection. But right now, it seems like this game is ready to deliver a much more immersive and much better product than what we have seen in the football gaming atmosphere in at least a decade. And I am all for it. So I might not be the most read up on college football as I am with the NFL and Madden. But you can bet that I am going to be in this game. I am going to be putting out content about this. So if you guys are excited for that, if you don't want to miss any of that, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and you turn on that bell notification because I'm going to be talking about this more and more as the game comes up. And of course, we have more stuff about Madden coming out. I appreciate you guys so much for watching. I will see you guys next time.